Well, hello. I'm glad you could come pray with me. If you are watching live this morning or if you watch a little bit later on today, this is the day before Thanksgiving. So I bid you a happy Thanksgiving day. I hope it is a, a day filled with blessings. We are continuing our sessions where we seek to learn about prayer, to deepen our individual prayer lives, and to take a little time just to be in prayer together, which I hope you will stick around for. Um, and we are also continuing to use Marsha Ford's book, The Indispensable Guide to Practically Everything Prayer. Uh, we started off looking at some of the big questions around prayer, and then we broke down the Lord's Prayer phrase by phrase. We finished that up last week. And this morning, we are beginning her section on looking at the great prayers of um, history, um, of the world. Uh, the great prayers of history is actually what she calls it. Um, and I wanted to start with um, the scripture from Hebrews 4.16 that she has here. Whenever we are in need, we should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. There we will be treated with undeserved kindness and we will find help. A wonderful encouragement for us to continue to seek our God in prayer. But the first uh, great prayer of history that she lifts up to us is Reinhold Niebuhr, uh, a great American theologian, uh, was born in 1892, died in 1971, uh, actually. Um, and uh, he was someone that um, had a, a great influence over many, many folks, uh, including uh, Dietrich B uh, uh, Bonhoeffer, um, who was another great prayer uh, that I'm thinking we might get to a little bit later on. But uh, Reinhold Niebuhr is the one that is credited with uh, the prayer that ranks probably second right behind the Lord's Prayer in uh, the, how well it is known across the world, and that is the Serenity Prayer. Um, records show that he probably uh, began uh, what became known as the Serenity Prayer later, uh, but a prayer that he wrote probably around 1932, 33, and uh, in Ford's book, she mentions uh, that he was actually, they were on vacation. He was preaching at um, Heath Union Church in Heath, Massachusetts. And his daughter uh, had a, a recollection of it. And she wrote, it was in an ordinary Sunday morning service at the Heath Union Church in the summer of 1943 that my father first used this new prayer. And... Um, one of the earliest versions of it, it didn't start off as the version that we know today, but one of the earlier versions of it, um, uh, as it prays for wisdom, read, um, God, give us grace to accept the serenity, with serenity, the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things that should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish one from the other. And so there are these three requests, of course, that still are in that prayer today. Three requests wrapped up in um, these wonderful words by Reinhold Niebuhr. The first um, would be um, serenity, <laughs> serenity or peace. Um, and that is something I think many of us find fleeting <laughs> these days. Um, the world is very hectic, very fast paced. Here on the day before Thanksgiving, a uh, peace is often quite fleeting for many of us. Either we're uh, feeling some distress over um, a family gathering, either because um, we're not sure about how the family will be together, um, maybe because there has been a loss in the family, and so there'll be someone who is greatly missed at that gathering. Uh, maybe we're the one that's hosting, and so we have that frantic brain of getting everything just perfect uh, for uh, the meal and the gathering. All those things, of course, that we can um, get sucked into as, as uh, peace stealers, right? Um, that we can still miss someone and still find peace. Uh, we can still prepare a wonderful meal and still find peace to seek that serenity in our lives. Um, Ford says, God offers a different peace. As Jesus prepared his disciples for his death, he told them, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And that's from the Gospel of John 14th chapter. And so a big part of finding peace, of finding serenity is surrender. <laughs> Um, and that's a word that I think has a kind of a negative connotation for many of us, like it's giving up, but it's not giving up when it comes in our faith. When we surrender to God, it is a releasing of our trying to control things and allowing uh, the Holy Spirit uh, to take control and guide our lives. And when we can do that, we will find a great deal of peace, much more than when we try to be in control, or maybe I should just talk about myself when I try to be in control. <laughs> I'm sure none of you have to deal with any of that. Uh, the second um, request that is wrapped up in this prayer is uh, a prayer for courage. And this is uh, not uh, the kind of courage that one needs for battle, uh, to take on an enemy, but it really is a courage to move forward in faith, right? Uh, to uh, to surrender. It, it, you have to be very courageous to surrender your will to God's will, I believe. Um, we know that God is a great encourager. Uh, God has encouraged many throughout uh, the centuries and in um as we see in scripture, God is uh, sends the Holy Spirit to be an encourager for us as well. And so if we can lean into that encouragement that we find in the Holy Spirit within us and in God's provision for us and God's love for us, uh, that goes a long way in pushing us forward into the courage we need to step forward in our faith in so many different ways. Sometimes that means, as the prayer says, taking uh, care of something that needs to be taken care of. And sometimes that means stepping away from something. Um, and I know I, I personally uh, have to remind myself sometimes what is mine to do and what is not. Um, sometimes something does need to be taken care of, but it's not mine to take care of. And uh, so that uh, also, it gets wrapped up in this prayer for me. And then, of course, uh, the final thing, uh, the final request in this prayer is for wisdom. Wisdom, something I pray for quite often. Uh, something Solomon, uh, uh, she tells us that Solomon was given the opportunity to receive uh, unequaled wealth or unparalleled wisdom from God. And Solomon chose wisdom and God still bestowed upon him riches, wisdom, and honor. And so when he chose wisely, <laughs> he received much more than he had anticipated. Uh, but wisdom it really is the ultimate goal of this prayer, um, is to have wisdom over all of these things uh, as we seek peace, as we seek serenity, as we seek courage to move forward in our faith. All of these things, of course, take wisdom. <clears throat> she says that uh, Solomon, James, uh, oh yes, James, I was going to get to James. Um, in uh, the Gospel of James, Gospel, sorry, the letter uh, that James uh, wrote in uh, 1 5, the beginning of James's um, letter, we are reminded, let me find it here, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. And so God is so willing to give us wisdom if we will just request it, right? If we are wise enough to request wisdom, God grants us that wisdom without a chastising us for uh, not being wise in the past or uh, not uh, heeding uh, the Holy Spirit's guidance. But God is so willing uh, to grant us that wisdom as we lean into the leading of the Spirit and so again, Ford says, Solomon, James, and Reinhold Niebuhr, three men who believed God's promise to give the people wisdom, which is a promise for all of us, isn't it? It's not just, it was not just for these uh, three great men, uh, but the scripture stands for each and every one of us to make that request, male, female, uh, doesn't matter who we are, we can request wisdom. And so this is a prayer that um, it, it kind of reminds me, too, of the, the prayer that the Holy Spirit gave me years ago that I often use um, when I begin a sermon. And that is a prayer for calm, clarity, and courage. 
Um, and the calm, of course, is that serenity, that peace. Uh, clarity is that a full understanding of um, whatever the Lord has to say to us through the Holy Spirit. And then that courage, uh, which will uh, give us what we need to step forward into our faith, uh, to move forward into whatever God calls us to do. Uh, and sometimes those things need more courage than others. Um, we never know where the Lord will lead us. And so... Um, all of that, though, <laughs> falls back on needing wisdom, right? Also, um, as we seek to follow God. Proverbs 1 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so we don't want to be foolish, right? We want to seek out that wisdom. We want to seek out that instruction through the Holy Spirit and allow that to, to uh, really. Um, be over our lives and our, our directional, um, our direction for our lives and all that we do. And uh, so often we can get wrapped up in thinking that we know the best way to do things. And sometimes we don't fall back on the spirit or fall back onto prayer until the very last, right? The old phrase, there's nothing left but a wing and a prayer. And um, if we would go to that wing and prayer first, if we go to the angels and, and, and the Lord first, uh, we might not uh, feel so desperate by the end of a situation. And so the serenity prayer stands as uh, a wonderful prayer. Um, I know that Alcoholics Anonymous have adopted it into um, their 12-step program. I think others have as well. Uh, they added to it uh, a, a little bit as well. Um, but it is a, a prayer that many of us uh, utter sometimes under our breath in the midst of situations and one that can, it, it, short, simple, and to the point of all of our needs. But for some of us, we have a, a more, uh, a stronger need for peace or serenity. Some of us have a stronger need for the courage, and some of us have a stronger need for the wisdom. Um, each of us knows where we are weaker in, in those three requests that this prayer makes. And so as we pause this morning and take time for our individual prayer, I would encourage you to, to kind of sit for a minute, a minute with whichever one of those things uh, you feel is, is your weaker area in your life and uh, make that your focal point, just that one thing, your focal point in our time of prayer this morning. Uh, decide if it is um, serenity that you uh, need more, if you need uh, courage more or wisdom, whichever it is that is um the thing that is lacking in your life the most. <laughs> I know all of us probably feel like I need all of those, um, but there's one I'm sure that is a, a bigger struggle for each of us. And so I would encourage you to make that your focus uh, as we pause to take our, our individual prayer time now. Um, as always, I will begin the, the time with the three tones and end uh, the five minutes with the three tones so you don't have to keep track of your time. And I'll have some music playing in the background. So let us take a moment to individually and yet as community come before our God in prayer.
I want to thank you for being part of this time this morning. Uh, those that I know are here are uh, Susan and Connie and Mary Lynn and Nancy and Becky. And thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for continuing um, this journey with us. It's an honor uh, to pray with you at this time. And I'm so glad that you continue to work uh, in your faith and in your time of prayer through a con uh, to deepen that connection with God, because I believe that if more of us would be doing this, uh, the world would be a better place for each person that learns to love more. The world um, increases in love. So thank you so much for being here this morning or whenever it is that you watch this session. I pray for blessings on each of you for this Thanksgiving holiday that you uh, find many blessings uh, to lift to your hearts of thanks to God and uh, to have that attitude of gratitude, even if there are struggles and hardships around at this time. Look for the many ways God is present and blesses you. And so we will close this time, and I thought it seemed only fitting to close it with the serenity prayer as it has come to be known. Will you bow with me? A gracious God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's the power of Christ that we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Thank you again for being here and blessings on your week. I'll look forward to praying with you next week.